Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class World War II Hot Rod or Hot Rod from Transformers The Last Night. I definitely think it's safe to say that I have saved the worst figure out of the way for last and I've got to say that this review will be more of a comparison between this figure and the original World War II Bumblebee. Taking a closer more detailed look at the figure's head sculpt, this is really where this figure shines. The head sculpt looks exactly how Hot Rod appeared in Transformers The Last Night and is even better than the original deluxe class figure that we got in 2017. This has got a really nice set of paint apps including an orange colour for the cheeks and the nose as well as a really nice silver paint for the mouth and around the eyes and then finally the eyes have been picked out in a super nice metallic green paint app. We can see with loads of different sculpted in ridges within the character's head really giving some definition to the different facial components of Hot Rod and it really really does look like a very very nice head sculpt. This whole chest region here is a completely brand new sculpt and is a major departure for what we got on the original World War 2 Bumblebee. This is more like a war tank than what we got on Bumblebee and it's got some nice detail such as this deco here as well as various different nuts and bolts we've also got a really nice silver paint app for this area of hot rod as well as on his crotch armor and we've also got some nice tubing and wiring detailing actually underneath this section giving this character some definition to the sculpt he also has got completely new shoulder armor which wasn't apparent on the world war ii bumblebee and we have this really really obscure looking logo which i have no idea what it's supposed to mean nor replicate if we move down to the figure's arms as you can see we've got some nice silver paint apps on the forearms as well with a really nice contrasting bright orange color. Turning now to the lower region of the figure, the entire leg assembly is completely the same as what we saw on the World War II Bumblebee. Although we've got now got some different decos such as this weird emblem here as well as a completely different emblem D2 on the side. Perhaps that was Hot Rod's code name in World War II. It's not really discussed in the flashback scene. But once again, I really, really like how the wheels of the vehicle mode actually become embedded within the shin areas of the figure, much like the on-screen CGI model. Model. Another new element that this figure has is a completely brand new blaster which really looks like Hot Rod stopped the time gun only slightly aged to fit the period in which it's supposed to be in and it definitely appears as if though these are a ring of bullets all picked out in a really nice orange paint and I really think the detailing of the barrel looks really really cool as well. Unfortunately he does still have a massive backpack which was something which was apparent on the original World War 2 Bumblebee but from the front it really doesn't look too intrusive. In terms of the figure's articulation the head is on a ball joints so it can look left to right as well as up down and tilt side to side the arms are on ball joints so it can lift up down forwards and out to the sides 360 rotation just above the elbow a soft ratcheting joint at the elbow and due to transformation the hands can pivot forwards and backwards if you lift this section up at the back we do in fact get a quite a decent looking waist joint which can allow you to get the figure into some nice poses the legs can kick forwards that far and then out to that far as well as do the split there is a there is a rotation joint at the thigh, but as you can see, the ball joints of the legs can pop off really, really easy. The knees can bend at 90 degrees, and due to transformation, you can pivot the foot forwards in order to get some cool poses. One thing to note that they've actually fixed on this figure is the figure has no floppy legs whatsoever, which was something that was apparent on the original World War II Bumblebee. Talking of the original World War II Bumblebee, here we have both Hot Rod and World War II Bumblebee standing side by side to each other. And I've got to say that as a duo, they look absolutely fantastic. This is definitely the brothers in arms that was hinted at at the movie. Unfortunately, it didn't play out that way, but it was definitely implied. And you can really see the differences between the chest area of Bumblebee compared to Hot Rod, as well as on these shoulder pieces. The head sculpt is by far the biggest difference. And Bumblebee included a hammer and a shotgun like pistol, whereas Hot Rod includes more more of a blaster looking weapon. We can also see that the paint variation is drastically different with Bumblebee being picked out in a colour that is majoritively green, whereas on Hot Rod he is more of a gunmetal grey slash black with some really nice silver and orange highlights. Getting down to Hot Rod's transformation, it is exactly the same as Bumblebee's. To begin with we're going to want to set his accessory off to the side and we're just going to want to straighten his arms out. We're then going to want to take these arms and just dislodge them from their connection points if they haven't come untabbed already. And we're going to want to take this whole back assembly and pull it out. We're then going to want to take these wheels here and straighten those out. This whole section now will actually rotate around. So just bring that around. And you just want to take this piece now and pull this in and just pop the head so that the chin protrudes through this gap. Now what we can do is take these sections and straighten those out and just have those rest along the sides like so. There is some tabs on here that we can plug in later on. But what we'll do here is lift this section up 
and pop this wheel open, take the foot and fold it in and repeat the same process now for this side, pop the wheel out and collapse the foot in, collapse this panel down and this panel and then just bring these two together and snap those into place on the underside as well. And now as you can see there are two tabs here and here that will actually plug into some slots on the arms. We're going to want to fold the hands in on both sides, rotate this whole section around and this slot here is what will plug into those tabs. So just align those and tab those into place and repeat the same process now for this side, bring this around, line this up, tab it into place. It more or less just rests there rather than tab in, but you do just want to get it more or less in that position so that you should be left with something that looks like this. Now what we can do is take these panels here and fold these out and proceed to collapse this all the way down. And it's just a matter of getting the tabs underneath the front grille section and then tabbing all of this into place nice and securely as well as nice and flushly. We can then take this section here and fold this out. And you're going to want these two tabs on either side to tuck under the wheels and the wheels will actually peg into place. So just snap that in and snap that side in. Ensure that all of this is as tightly compressed as possible. You're going to want to take this section here, lift it up and rotate this around. And now we're going to take his blaster and the blaster has some grooves, a groove here and a groove on the other side that will actually slide into this section. So just demonstrating that you want to align that up and slide that in, collapse this section down. And here we have World War II Hot Rod in his World War II vehicle mode. Now taking a look at Hot Rod in his vehicle mode, I've got to say that I do actually quite like the alternate form on Hot Rod, despite it being inaccurate to the movie. And similarly to Robot Mode, he does in fact have some different parts that the original World War II Bumblebee didn't have. Most noticeably, the side panels are completely brand new sculpts with these extra pouches on the side, almost as if though they are toolboxes strapped to the side, which look really awesome. I really like how his weapon integrates actually within the vehicle mode and looks like a turret sitting at the front. I really like the metallic black glossy paint that they've used for the front section of the vehicle as well as on the side almost like a fade that goes into a more matte type of color that is a really really nice look and just overall I think that it's quite a nice looking vehicle mode despite it not being accurate to the movie it does roll rather nicely as well and of course bringing Bumblebee in for a comparison once again they really do look rather different when comparing them the weapons are in completely different positions with this version having the shotgun at the top and the barrel of the hammer sticking out whereas this one has a completely different different weapon more realistic I definitely think and you can see that the new version with the pouches on the side looks a lot lot better than this one and I think that as a visually appealing looking figure this version is a lot better than this this is rather drab and doesn't really have much going on whereas this has different tones of black throughout it in order to make it look slightly more cooler it really really does look pretty awesome so overall I think that these two figures look different enough but once again they are completely inaccurate to the movie so there was my review of the Transformers Studio Series World War II Hot Rod. Personally, I really don't think this figure is essential to your collection. I don't think that the robot mode nor the vehicle mode is a good enough resemblance to what we see on screen in order to worth picking it up. It really, really is quite a throwaway character. And unless you're collecting the Studio Series figure by figure and actually wanting to complete all the numbers, then I really don't think you need to go out and hunt this figure down. Here's a nice inclusion if you want to kind of fill out your last night collection with some of the World War II figures figures but these are really the only two characters that actually appear within that scene and I really once again don't think that they are accurate enough to worth being displayed upon your shelf. I hope you enjoyed my rather more shorter more comparison like video on this hot rod figure. This was definitely the figure that I was least anticipating and I've got to say it doesn't necessarily really improve my opinion by having the figure in hand so personally this is not a figure that I necessarily recommend. I hope you enjoyed this review if you did please let me know down in the comment section below and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.